We are the followers of the root of Jesse that the pro prophet Isaiah spoke of. We are the ones who are now called to stand as a signal to the world, to all of creation, that peace, peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. We light this candle, the candle of proclaim peace, in part to remind ourselves that we are a people rising toward God's promise. But we also light this candle as a sign to the world, an announcement. There are some who hold on to hope, and there are some who work the ways of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel, God with us, is still our fervent prayer. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And while we sing, you may remain dead. children willing to come forward you don't have to go you don't have to ah there you are good I knew there would be more so before I sit down with you I would like to do something that I started last Sunday which is remember the name of the first candle of the at the advent wreath yes Exactly. The first candle is named Hope. The second candle is named Peace. And I will hang this little peace name tag on the Advent wreath. It's a dove. Well, it's supposed to be a dove. Right. 
right? And there is an olive twig. And, and well, I put it on the Advent wreath, okay? So the second candle has the name peace. All right? You can all see it. And we will add to the Advent wreath during the next Sundays. But this is not what I had in my box. So today, in my box, is something that if I shake it, I won't break it. Actually, there are two things in there. One is a song again, which we would sing. But here's something in there. Ta-da! What? When you graduated from preschool, so it was a certificate and says, congratulations. You are old enough now to move on to school. So it told you more about how other people saw you, right? Well, this is also something, but it's not a certificate. Let me put it away. What's in there? There are two things. Yes, two things are in here. This is number one. palm trees and a star and many more stars and a house. I lift this up so that people have an idea of how that looks like. All right. This is actually my admin calendar. What? It's an empty picture, right? This goes with it. There are stars on there. Let me hold it up so that others can see it too, and even maybe you on the screen. There are stars, and the stars are having numbers on them. Right? For every day, exactly. Baby Jesus. There's baby Jesus on there, and there are stars on there. And what you do is you peel off a star, and you can put it on your Advent calendar. So that's day one. We are already in day four. Can you take off number two? Necessarily next to one. Got it? You can put it wherever you want. And there is number four. You want to stick number four on there? Way up there. Oh, way down there. Exactly. But you know, there are others on here which are stickers as well. And they do not have numbers. A white star, a smiley star, little stars without any number on there. And there are, what's that? A sheep. And that's a camel and a baby bird. So I give you stickers and you can put it on.
here or would you say so like the food is still on the table the food is still on its way the food gets a pass the food gets a pass all right so you all get one calendar to take home all right so i put this on yeah I need your help to sing the song that we will sing during the Christmas pageant for the entire congregation. And it's O Little Town of Bethlehem. Do you know that one? No. Let's hum the melody. <laughs> Little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the lie. How still we see the lie. Above the deep and dreamless sleep. Above the deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Silence, go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years. The hopes and fears of all the years. In thee tonight, oh, in thee tonight. All right, and what you can do, you can go home and ask your mammy, mommy, to replay the tape, and then you can sing along and learn it because it's recorded now. Is that cool? All right, but let's hold our hands and have a prayer, and you repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, dear God, thank you for helping us during Advent. Thank, thank you, you for, for helping, helping us during Advent, Advent to learn and see, to learn and, and see what you want us to know. What, what you want, want us, us to know. know. Help us to sing. Help, help us, us to sing, sing and to listen to your word and to and listen to, listen to your, your word with love and joy. With, with love and joy. joy. This we pray in your holy name. This we, we pray, pray in, in your, your holy, holy name. name. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming up. And if you go downstairs after worship service, you get your calendar. Okay? I rolled it up, and then you can be excited. Thanks for coming up. We continue with the reading. This morning's Old Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. In this reading, Isaiah describes the coming of a future ideal ruler, a ruler who will renew David's royal line, the stump of Jesse. Gifted by the Spirit of God, this ruler will reign with perfect justice. Enmity and danger will be restored to harmony and peaceful coexistence. And now the reading. 
A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be at the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together. A little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hands on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him and his blessing shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. of vipers you warned you who warned you to flee from the wrath to come bear fruit worthy of repentance do not presume to say to yourselves we have Abraham as our ancestors I tell you God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham and even now the axe is lying to the root of the tree Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 
I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing folk is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And grace to you and peace from the one who was, who is, and who is yet to come. Amen. Dear friends, I love the season. It's the season of waiting. And different than waiting for Easter during Lent, this season is filled with joyous anticipation. We are waiting for something good to happen. During Lent, we know that there will be a crucifixion, so it's different. But we are waiting for something to happen. And that is the focus of Advent. That's why we slow down and begin to focus on what that could be. What can happen in this world, how it is, to be met with nothing but sheer joy. We'll see. We aren't there yet. But the promise is that something will happen and it will transform our lives. And we get to repeat it over and over again. It's like putting stickers on an advent calendar, one after the next, one after the next, till all the pieces are in place and the picture is complete. So we have Sunday after Sunday, beginning with the Sunday of hope, now moving into the Sunday named peace. We are invited to repeat it, not because we have to or we must, but we are invited to repeat it again and again and again. We are invited to dream ourselves into the wishes we have, wishes for a different world, wishes for all children be fed, Wishes for those who are hurting being healed. And we are inviting, invited during the season of Advent to dream ourselves in those possibilities. Slowly but steadily, giving our wishes and hopes a face, an image of how that might look like. Well, we know there is also in today's gospel the possibility of that whatever will not grow and prosper and bear fruit will be cut out. And that is something that plays a role for me personally in this year foremost. What if we begin to cut away what's hindering us to get to what brings life and joy? What if we begin to cut away and sort out the dead, the ugly, the negative, the not growing parts in this world? How will that look like? And what if I begin to dream myself towards the image of how that might look like. 
I know that the season of Advent is also a contradictory season. You know, we slow down because it gets dark earlier. I don't get to rush home and get my walk on the beach. I sit at home. And I ha seem to have more time to read and think. So my life is slowing down while nature slows down. But at the same time, I begin to prepare for services so it begins to get a little hectic. And the same is true for all of us. Preparing for Christmas when visitors might arrive or we want to get things that done might feel a little he more hectic than usual. So in this contradiction, we are invited to dream ourselves into something that is not here yet and slow our lives down and cut away the negative. Last Sunday, we heard from the prophet Isaiah that dreaming into the future can mean that swords get beaten into plowshares. And it could also mean that all the spears can be beaten into pruning hooks. And then hope settles in to the spaces that begin to open up. Today, this vision of what it might look like to beat swords into plows, today, Isaiah re-emphasizes this vision. He says in almost unbelievable words that it will be like that the wolf will rest with the lamb. The wolf will rest with the lamb. And that is, my friends, not some kind of fairy tale. It's a possibility, the impossible possibility according what happens when God leans into God's dreams. God has dreams as well. Remember when you opened scripture, God dreamed of a creation that could be nourishing and helping in all its parts to be one unified, harmonious creation. And this God's dream is still alive in this world. Even after a week like last week, when the United States introduced an even better and greater killing machine, the stealth bomber. There was at the same week the possibility between two nation presidents to open the door for conversations with the one whom we call the enemy and aggressor. President Biden and President Macron agreed that the door should be open to have conversation with President Putin. Will that happen? We don't know. But if we cut away what is not life-giving, if we dream and lean into the dream and wish that there should be peace on earth, maybe that's a possibility. And maybe that if there are enough people together dreaming this dream, it can happen. Gandhi dreamt. Martin Luther King dreamt. So many others dreamt with them and made things happen for a better world. After World War II, nations dreamt what it might look like to have peace for all, so that all can live a life in prosperity and justice. That's how the United Nations came about. And the next day was that all kinds of nations created institutes 
how and why it is important to work on peace. There were all kinds of new organizations created after World War to promoting peace for all. What we know now, it takes compromise and collaboration. It doesn't take weapons to make peace happen. And the cry after World War II that for God's sake there should never be war again, this cry echoed around the world, but we know the realities. Still, I think because of all of this, God's dream, God's dream is alive. God is dreaming with us. And we should remember what God is up to. God is up to a shalom that surpasses all our thinking, ideas, and visioning. God's horizon is a vision for the new world. And it begins with a dead, injured, broken stump out of which the shoot of new life will emerge. You could say that stump became for the Christians the cross. And out of the cross, new life sprang forth. And you know how God could transform life then and will continue to do so. God can transform the realities we create. And my hope is that God's shalom will prevail. That God's dream will prevail for you and for me, for this congregation, for the city we live in, for this nation, and for the entire world. There can and will be always human beings who become the carriers of God's dream, the light walking into darkness. There will be and always will be people who carry this light with great charisma and conviction, helping others to set their hearts on fire so that God's dream can become reality. The dream of peace, equity, and justice for all. And to this God who dreams such big dreams for us, be the glory forever. Amen. of our ancestors, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and let us join in the prayers of the people. For as we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for hymn writers and theologians, inspired teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. You give us a vision of creation and harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy. Oh, how glory God and ransom captive in You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve for the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. Deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refuge and those, refugees and those fleeing violence. God in your mercy. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound hospitalized, or separated from loved ones. Embrace all who have died trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy. Out of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this point during the worship service, a few announcements. First of all, the offering plate will circulate during special music. And don't forget to make happen what your leaders of this congregation are envisioning to be the mission and ministry of Calvary Lutheran Church. Also, it's not too late to make your pledge for 2023. Adult form after worship, it's again learning more about the season of Advent. I, I get this help. Doing, yeah, doing special music. We have time. So we get this done, and um, there, as I said, there's time for the pledge. 
And after worship service, as I began saying, learn more about Advent at the Adult Forum. Um, also after worship service in the basement, there is the kickoff of the Advent season with children. They are preparing stockings for the families which we support with Christmas angels. If you want to join the kids, you are invited to go down there as well and maybe assist them a little with getting the stockings done or just enjoy each other's company. That's after worship service today. Um, maybe, where's Beth? There's Beth. Maybe this is a good point for you to make more announcements on the Christmas angels. Before I forget you again. <laughs> and um, first I want to say thanks to the children who are going to participate this morning in the Angels program. As I've said before, this is a, a whole church effort um, and everybody shows up every year in amazing ways. Um, this morning I have some great news. When we put away the trees, the tents, and the tables last week, we had 28 wish lists still remaining to be adopted. As of this morning, thanks to those of you who reached out via phone or online uh, to adopt, we're down to nine. Um, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the authors of those lists. Some of our families um, who STEP connects us with will have a service member deployed over Christmas. Most of them are stationed in San Diego for the first time. And as any of you who moved here from somewhere else know, that's a big adjustment. Of the nine wish lists that remain, here are some of the details. We have Kira, a 21-year-old woman who put cosmetology school on hold to start her family. She and her husband, Joe, were high school sweethearts, and she's asking for jeans, a throw blanket, bath towels. <laughs> um, that's often what we see in these lists. People for ask, ask for normal household items um, that the rest of us might take for granted. Um, Talia is nine months old, but she is advanced for her age and already walking. She's asking for educational toys with lights and sounds, musical toys and clothes, size 12 to 18 months. And Anthony, who is 32 years old and is one of our service members who will be deployed over Christmas. So he'll have to open his gifts when he returns. Every single year, Calvary comes through for all of these families, and I know this year will be no different. Only nine more lists, so please help us grant these wishes today. Uh, if you don't want to do the shopping, that's not a problem. Our intrepid shoppers will do the work for you. If you don't want to commit to a whole list, you can still donate to help cover the cost, and any amount helps. If you've already adopted, or if you'd just like to find another way to contribute, we still need many hands to sort, organize, wrap, and deliver. We'll be getting down to business on that starting next week, and deliveries go out two weeks from today. If you're attending online today, please take a look at your e-news to discover how you can help. And if you have any questions, please reach out, reach out to me or Susie Shattuck for help. Today, stop by the tables for those last few adoptions and sign up. Susie will be handing out a little flyer to give you uh, a reference of what's happening and when. And next Sunday, all gifts are due. Thank you for your ongoing support of the Christmas Angels Ministry. And we will see you in the courtyard this morning. Thank you, Beth. And if all of you want to change and transform the space here up front, there's still time to purchase poinsettias in honor, honor or in memory of a loved one. So outside our envelopes, just make sure that you grab an envelope so we know that's for the flowers. Finally, Lorna Reed has passed. She was a member here at Calvary Lutheran Church. Lorna Reed, she was 90 years old. And those of you who are long timers right, might remember her because she was always wearing orange, her favorite oh, color. Yeah. And on special days, she wore red. So, and she had a very interesting life. If you want to know more or write a card to the family, call the office on Monday. All right? Lorna Reed. 
Right. And with that being said, thank you for sharing your gift of music, all you up there behind the microphones. Um, we are ready. be with you always and also with you let's take a moment to share Christ's peace and get ready for communion you out there on your live stream and wave or bow sharing God's love And let me say this clearly that we do have communion in person, so you will get a piece of bread, or if you choose to um, a gluten-free wafer, you will pick up your little communion cup with grape juice and toss the used cup into the white basket on the edges um, of the railing. And if you prefer to continue using your little single cup with the wafer on top, that is possible too. 
just raise your hand and let the usher know that you would like one. Good. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. And let me remind you that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to those who followed him, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Oh, our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Again, communion will be served by you coming forward through the center aisle. Then commune and take back your seat by walking through the side aisles. All are welcome. This is not Calvary's table or a Lutheran table or an American table. This is God's table. Again, all are welcome. I invite the communion assistants to come forward first.
Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace now and forever. Amen. 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 I keep saying this over and over again. Worship service does not stop by walking out of the sanctuary or switching off the live stream. Worship service continues during the entire week. It's all about our lives praising our maker. And with that, receive God's abundant blessing for the week to come. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. Thanks be to God. God.